In AFL 23, there are many factors that go into determining the outcome of a marking contest. From positioning, timing, to the player attributes, and even more, there's many factors that we're going to go through here today. To find out a bit more about how a marking outcome is determined, we can pop down to the guide, scroll across to the marking section, and read a bit about what goes into the outcomes of a marking contest. So here at the start, it mentions being first to the ball, getting yourself in the position of the contest as early as possible. But maybe that's not enough, right? You also need to time the grab with this single button press of triangle. You need to feel the vibration of the controller and then press triangle. And hopefully that'll be the best possible timing. But even that might not be enough. You might be out of position or you might have another highly skilled player coming over the top of you who may be able to mark it in front of you or spoil away the ball. Also looking a bit further into this, it says to look out for areas where you don't want to have a teammate outnumbered or outclassed. So if you have a contest where it's one on four, you're unlikely to win that contest. And we'll go into a bit more of that, but that's a good overview of what can out actually determine the outcome of marking. The positioning of the players in the contest is a key attribute to determining the outcome of the contest. If you get to the front of the contest and intercept a mark, you're in the best position possible. You want to try to get your player to the drop of the ball as quickly as possible. But even so, there are some times that you just get caught behind and it feels like there's not much you can do in a contest. Saying that, you still want to try your best in a contest because sometimes the game determines that a fumble is the outcome of the contest. This may happen because your timing was better than the person in front or maybe their skills weren't good enough to make that mark. So when looking at player stats, we can see a few things that will have an effect on a marking contest. Physicality, so particularly for a contested ball. When we look at offensive, we can see the marking and positioning stats that obviously have a, a lot to do with that marking ability. But when we look more defensively for things like spoiling, we do have a actual spoil attribute. And then we look at the proficiencies. So the vertical leap, speckies, contested marking, as well as tap to advantage. Basically the game's gonna weigh up all of these stats between the players in the contest, as well as a few other features like timing of the button press, positioning, and even factors of how many people are at the contest to weigh up what the outcome of that contest will be. Whether it's a mark, whether it's a spoil to the opposition, or possibly even a fumble. With timing, you want a single press of either triangle for a mark or a flick of the right stick in the direction you want to punch. You'll have a shrinking white circle on the ground to help you, but also the vibration of controller to indicate the perfect timing of a mark. So when you go for a mark, you can't just tap, 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 because it takes the first tap as your input. Instead, what you want to do is just a single well-timed tap just after you feel that vibrate. So it's obviously hard to show, but after a while, you start to get a feel for when that vibrate will occur and the proper timing to when you need to do that button press for the mark. So with the timing, if you go to create a custom difficulty, you can come down and find these settings and it will give you a bit more of an idea of how that will work. So here you have the perfect, good, okay, and poor mark timing windows. And you can see here I've adjusted it to just be on medium. Putting it to medium, you can see this cascading effect of the timing windows going from perfect down through to poor. And if you switch over to the different difficulties, you can see how they'll adjust for the difficulty that you're playing on. And this will give you a bit more of an idea of how hard marking will be with the timings. So obviously you can go through and adjust these timing windows to suit your preferences, but also you can go down and adjust these two settings, the mark timing and spoil timing settings. These act as an overall boost for either marking or spoiling. So if you feel like you like more spoiling, pump that up a bit, and therefore marking will take a, more of a back seat to the spoils in contests. Martin. The kick was a big factor in marking contests is the amount of players you have at the drop of the ball. You can see here, I lose the contest, mainly because they had more players at 
the location okay. of the marking contest. Here you can see I've got two players there and they have four in the vicinity, making it easier for them to take the mark even though I was attempting to spoil. So what you want to do is try to move as many players to the contest as you can. Here you can see I run to help out the teammate in the contest and win the mark. So even though we only really have one-on-one -on -one jostling animations and not a whole lot of full pack mark animations, purely having more people at the drop of the ball will help you win that marking contest. Lastly, we have the exciting stuff, the speckies in the game. There's plenty of animations and this can be performed with L2 and triangle, but you sort of need to have the right positioning and run up for that to occur. You can also do a specky spoil with L2 and the right stick. Hopefully this helps with understanding the many factors that go into marking contests in AFL 23. Let me know what you think or if you've got any questions and I'll see you next time.